got a couple here. It's uh, apparently Mary, assault and battery in the third degree, and public disorderly conduct. And this happened uh, in Union. It looks like 2124 Whitmire Highway. So this is what happened. Deputies were dispatched to 306 Fairmont Street in the Monarch community of Union in reference to shots fired. Upon arrival, it was learned that an altercation had taken place within the residence and someone fired two shots from a firearm in front of the residence. No one was injured. No property damage was noticed. No one at the scene could or would identify the shooter. While deputies were on the scene, two intoxicated subjects that did not live on Fairmont Street were being blusterous and using profane language within hearing distance of a juvenile and on, that was on the scene and neighbors of 306 Fairmont Street, both subjects, Tyler Howes and Madeline Howes, were arrested and charged with disorderly conduct. Now, shooting a firearm in the air is not a good thing. What goes up has got to come down, right? Where's the bullet coming down at? It might not be right there. It could be somewhere else. So, neighbors, this is your community. If you know who did this, call 911. Call the sheriff's department. Call the uh, hotline. You know, let's, let's, let's get this nonsense out of the way. But this couple here got arrested or public this orderly conduct and cursing and screaming and yelling whatever like that in front of uh, uh, minors is not ever good. So they got arrested and taken to jail by our Union County Sheriff's Office. Okay, Herman Philip Farr, uh, 308 Atna Street in Union, driving under suspension his first offense and this is related to a DUI he had so reporting deputy officer Little John was patrolling the Buffalo community of Union County he observed a black sedan traveling down Main Street and the vehicle did not have headlights on as it was dark outside at this time so the deputy then got in behind the vehicle the vehicle turned right on Lindsay Street which was a dead end the vehicle then turned around and came back out on Main Street, turned on flat drive, turned around again, came back on the Main Street. The tag light was not working on the vehicle, causing the tag not to be clearly red, and the deputy then initiated a traffic stop on the vehicle. The vehicle stopped on Duncan Avenue just off of Main Street. The deputy then made contact with the driver who stated that he did not have his license on him. The driver seemed to have slurred speech, watery eyes, and smelled like alcohol. The deputy then asked him to step out of the vehicle. The driver then identified himself as Herman Farr, and the deputy then asked Mr. Farr if he would consent to some tests to see if he was okay to drive. Mr. Farr then stated that he would not and that he didn't have to. The deputy then explained to him that due to how he was driving, and his actions that he would believe that he was intoxicated. Mr. Farr then became silent and refused all tests. The deputy then cuffed Mr. Farr and escorted him to the front of his vehicle. At this point, Mr. Farr stated that the female in the back seat had nothing to do with it. So the deputy then looked in the back seat and noticed the female laying across the back seat. The female would not respond to the deputy. So the deputy then had EMS dispatched to the scene. The female then came around and was able to talk to the deputy. As she, as the deputy was asking the female for her name, Mr. Farr began to get irate, yelled and told the female that she didn't have to answer questions and for her to stay quiet. At this time, Corporal Stanley arrived on the scene and ran Mr. Farr's driver's license through the dispatch and was advised Mr. Farr was was suspended for previous DUI, so the deputy then advised Mr. Farr that he was under arrest and placed him in the vehicle. So the EMS checked out the female, and she refused the EMS and came back, uh, had a friend that came back, come back and get her. So he's 
arrested for driving under suspension, operating a vehicle without lights during nighttime, and reckless driving. So he's got several charges there on him. And uh, with the refusing to test, that can uh, be a problematic for him also, but he's already lost his license. So he's not uh, going anywhere. And so Herman Philip Farr, hopefully you will, you know, not do this anymore. Don't drink, and especially you don't even have a driver's license. You're going to jail. So, all right, we have Chelsea Dawn Carroll, 1437 Peach Orchard Road in Union. Public disorderly conduct is what she's charged with and arrested with. Uh, Corporal Israel arrived on the scene that someone called from Jungle Highway uh, in reference to a suspicious person. So when he arrived, he stated that she was outside smoking and an unknown female came walking up to the house and sat down beside her. She stated that she started talking to the female, but the female would not give her any information as to what she was doing. And she stated that, that the female finally identified herself as Chelsea Carroll and stated that she came from the Stardust Motel. Corporal Israel started to speak with Chelsea, who appeared to be under the influence based on past experience with Chelsea. While speaking with Chelsea, uh, Corporal Israel could make out was uh, that she was walked from the Stardust Motel and then she got kicked out and that she had been using meth. So she got kicked out of the Stardust Motel. Corporal Israel had Chelsea transported to the Stardust by Deputy Caldwell and Corporal Israel spoke with the owners of the Stardust Motel and was able to determine that Chelsea had not been staying there and that she was dropped off. While at the Stardust, Corporal Israel spoke uh, with uh, several people there who are both staying at the Stardust Motel. Both parties stated that Chelsea was dropped off and just started walking into rooms uninvited. Both stated that Chelsea appeared to be confused and under the influence of something. So Corporal placed Chelsea under arrest for public intoxication and she was transported to the jail for a booking. Meth is horrible and a bad addiction. Don't even know where she's at. Confused. And that's dangerous when you walk into other people's rooms. Uh, hope she can get some help or her addiction to meth. Uh, I'm going to say addiction because we take meth. you got other issues going on, too, that got you there. So I hope she gets some help there. Okay, arrested is Victoria Brannon Martin. She lives at 109 Stone Drive in Welford, South Carolina. And uh, she has several charges uh, against her. Attempted murder. Discharging firearms into a dwelling. Driving under suspension, possession of a weapon during a violent crime. Quite a few that she has on her, and this is what happened that caused her to get all these charges. On 1 4 2022, deputies were dispatched to 481 Fairwood Boulevard, lights in, in the County of Union, in reference to an argument between a male and a female. The caller, who was the manager, stated that two people are naked <laughs> outside their room fighting, and then he hung up. Dispatch called the manager back and stated that the female got inside of a car and left, and the male subject went back into his room and gave the room number. Sergeant Spencer was on the first to arrive on the scene and was met outside her vehicle by the manager. Mr. Patel, Patel, Mr. Patel showed her Sergeant Spencer the information on the mail used to book the room. The room was booked under the name of James Beasley, and the manager notified Sergeant Spencer that he heard gunshots as the female left. Upon arriving, 
approaching the door to the room, Sergeant Spencer observed a bullet hole in the glass window and then observed a bullet hole in the upper right, upper left hand side of the door to the room. Sergeant Spencer then notified other deputies that were had been uh, that there had been a gunshots in the room. So Sergeant Spencer knocked on the door and made contact with the male identified as James Beasley. And Sergeant Spencer asked Beasley what had occurred this morning. Beasley stated there was an argument. Sergeant Spencer then asked Beasley if that is all to it, that it was just an argument due to the bullet holes through the door and the glass. Beasley then acted shocked and stated that he did not know the female had fired shots at the room. He stated he heard shots as she drove off and thought she was firing into the air. Again, don't fire the, uh, guns in the air. Sergeant Spencer observed fragments from the bullet inside the room. And Sergeant Spencer didn't ask Beasley who the female was and he was reluctant to say her name. So Beasley stated he only knew the female by the name Star. Sergeant Spencer asked Beasley his relationship with Star and he stated an old friend. Sergeant Beasley observed a female inside the room as well. She was identified as Jennifer Allen Beasley. Mr. Beasley identified her as his newly wife. Then Corporal Burdine, he arrived on the scene. So Sergeant Spencer then went to the manager's room and viewed the video footage from the motel. A tan-colored four-door sedan pulls into the parking lot of the motel around 7 a.m. Around 7.50 a.m., the car pulls directly behind Beasley's car, and the female rolls down the window, and the female then gets out of the car and approaches room that they were staying in and bangs on the door. While waiting for the door to open, the female then appears to pull something over her face to cover it. The female continues knocking. Then you can see the door open and Beasley came out. The female swings at Beasley and in return he swings at her and they began to fight outside the hotel in the parking lot. Beasley then retreats to the room and the female goes to her car and you can see the female reach into her car and grab what appeared to be a long rifle. The female then takes coverage uh, behind Beasley's car and fires shots towards the room where Beasley retreated. The female then gets back into her vehicle and drives away. A copy of the video and footage was burned and placed with the case file. The Sergeant Spencer asks other deputies as well as public safety to be on the lookout for a tan four-door sedan with tinted windows driven by a black female. Corporal Verdine and Captain Coffer arrived on the scene and began to process evidence, and deputies were able to locate two shell casings outside in close proximity to Beasley's car where the female can be seen firing. One live round was also located by the car. Sergeant Smith was able to gather statements from both victims, and they found, of course, where she's at, and uh, they got warrants for her for attempted murder, possession of weapons, a violent crime, discharging of firearms into a dwelling, and driving under suspension. So, Victoria Brandon Martin, evidently there was something more than going on there with that relationship, and the man just must have just got married and dumped her, and don't know the full story there. We're being interested to see what that story is. But anyway, you can't be firing guns into a place. And if you have a breakup, break up. Go your way. Forget it. It's not worth all of this right here. Driving under suspension to get there. All the way from Welford. That's a good little drive. And now she's charged with attempted murder. And it's just, you know, it's crazy. So hopefully they'll get this worked out. And she realized that no relationship, a breakover, breakup is worth ill treatment of animals. And this happened on 104 Mill Avenue in Union. So if you know anything about this right here, please, please 
call the sheriff's department. This is so sickening. Uh, this was a, a, a dog that was set on fire, alive. And I just can't imagine the person that did this needs to be locked up. He needs his face showed everywhere on social media. He needs this badly because that poor animal can imagine sitting on fire alive. This happened on 1-7-2022. Uh, Corporal Burdine met with an control officer in reference to a complaint they responded to and animal control responded to 104 mill street in the city of union for a, a dog set on fire animal control has requested for the sheriff's office to look into this incident further animal control turned over all statements and pictures they gathered to corporal for dying this is so sickening right here for some individual to do this and I hope someone knows who did it whether they be they laughing and telling somebody about it or if they seen this guy or person woman whoever done this please let them get arrested where well, we can place them on Facebook on everybody's channel where they can see what a sorry person this is to do an animal that way this just infuriates me they, to no end that someone could be that cruel to a dog to set it on fire. So if you know anything about it, please, please call the sheriff's department. Let's get this guy a person. I keep saying guy. Let's get this person off the street for a little while anyway. But most of all, let's get his picture out there and let everybody see what a cruel person he really is. Okay, the other thing on the crime stream, uh, stream is that a burglary in second degree is a burglary that happened. And um, this happened uh, in Union County. And this has happened actually in Jonesville on 1478 Gaffney Highway where this happened. Corporal Burdine arrived on the scene and spoke to the victim, Sheila Prather. Brother stated on 1H, she came to her residence and found the gate across the driveway and the front door open around 7 p.m. Uh, Brother stated that she contacted her father to come and make sure no one was inside. Brother stated that the gate and door was closed earlier that day around 10 a.m. Brother also stated that due to it being dark when she was there, she did not know if anything had been taken. Martha stated when she returned in the daytime on 1 9 2022, she noticed things missing. She stated she was missing a DeWalt table saw and an off brand cordless drill with miscellaneous wrenches from inside the house. Martha stated she was missing a white metal cabinet, red metal toolbox, and two front fenders from a 68 Ford Torino and electrical wire from inside of barn behind the house. Bertha stated that everything was there when she left around 10 a.m. on 1-8-2022. And uh, Corporal Bordine found a chain link fence that had been cut with bolt cutters by the gate post. So, if you find anyone that's trying to sell these items, call the Sheriff's Department. It looks like this person knows what they were getting. They picked certain things out. And apparently, they don't do any work because they wouldn't be stilly. So please, if you know anything about this, someone bragging or someone's got some items that you know, especially the vendors of a, uh, of a car, of an older model car, a 68 Ford Torino, that just don't happen anywhere. So keep your eyes open for anyone selling tools and selling these things that we mentioned here and call the sheriff's department and let them know who you think it is. Hey, this is your community. It's your life and it could be you they're breaking into and stealing from. So let's get these thieves off the street. Well, I'm Jerry McKee. It's your community. It's your life. You see anything suspicious? Call the sheriff's department. 
They'll be there. Let them know. Let's get our community back from thieves and thugs. Have a great day.